that was a big change to the foreshore. We used to have a 22 meters playing with white sand. Now it's no longer there. A lot of houses along the shore has been moved upwards to the higher ground. The last flood that affected the back into valley was a very sad story to hear. We hear of uh, things like graveyards being turned up and dead bodies being seen around with dead animals. Uh, I really feel sad. Yes, and people. I mean, it's a flat land. The only place to escape is to climb up a coconut tree. Climate change is a stark reality facing many Pacific Island countries. Changing landscapes, unusual weather patterns, and food security are some of the challenges vulnerable communities across the Pacific are having to come to terms with. Adaptation or mitigation strategies are now being put in place, but countries in the Pacific are fast realizing that these may not be enough. In 2006, the number of Pacific Islanders living in Australia, New Zealand and the United States was just under 350,000. By 2013, this had increased to almost 400,000 and this number is expected to grow to three quarters of a million by 2050. Many more Pacific Islanders may choose to migrate as the damaging effects of climate change intensify. Pacific Island leaders like His Excellency, President Anote Tong of Kiribati and Prime Minister Enele Sopoanga of Tuvalu have been at the front line of climate change advocacy efforts throughout the Pacific and the world. Whatever we do, we'll never be able to accommodate the current level of population, let alone any increase in population. And so we have to accept that reality. And so in doing so, we would have to understand that some of them have to be relocated. Okay. And so we are providing options for those that want to migrate now as a matter of choice to do so uh, as, um, as worthwhile citizens. We are providing training. We want to provide upskilling so that they will be skilled and can apply to different countries beginning from yesterday to, to seek um, migration status on merit. All options must be on the table. And of course, the uh, option of migration uh, should not be closed off to my people. They are given a free, uh, totally uh, freedom to uh, explore those options if they so wish, in order in the interest of their families you know, and their communities. But uh, this is not an excuse for us not to continue to, to seek uh, proper global actions by the world community. And uh, as I was saying, uh, the agreement in Paris should address both uh, mitigation, adaptation as well. Because we may be running away, that's okay. We can run to Australia, New Zealand, wherever. And there are uh, a few, several options uh, people can look at. Eh? But first, it's not uh, stopping climate change. We're running to somewhere safe, but it's not stopping climate change. It will catch up with you. The danger, of course, is that uh, wherever you might be, you would not be considered top priority to those countries. And that's the danger that I don't want my people to face. They must be properly uh, educated, trained, and uh, empowered so that they can make the right decision and be aware of their rights uh, and be aware of the restrictions they might be facing in foreign countries. It's the most vulnerable and the poorest that suffer most. And there is a very strong gender dimension which has to be, which has to be brought out. Um, the fact that women find it more difficult, um, uh, have uh, huge problems that are different from the problems that men face. Um, and uh, I think we have to recognize that there is a gender dimension to almost all climate action and inaction. <laughs> and, uh, I'm glad that women leaders are coming together and we have a group of women leaders who will be increasingly looking at the issue of migration over the coming years. Kay and Manu are of Tuvaluan heritage but grew up in Kioa, an island in northern Fiji. Kioa Island was bought by their ancestors from Vaitupu in Tuvalu back in 1946. 
This island is now their home. Leaving behind a familiar culture, land, people, and having to settle in a new place wasn't easy. In hindsight, though, it was a decision that has been embraced by Kiowans today. It was quite a hard decision to leave our, our loved ones and move to a foreign place with a different culture and different things to, to see. But uh, yes, like we are so blessed that they made a good decision, a very wise decision. They see beforehand that there should be a, a change. And now we, we are here in Fiji, but our heart is with our people back in Tuvalu. We are so fortunate to be in Fiji, and we hope our people in Tuvalu, especially the Vaitupuans, eh, we one day to come over and see the land. It's been, it been a, a foretell by our people, the land beyond the horizon is here. For Pacific Islanders, displacement is not new. The people of Banaba, or Ocean Island, moved to Rambi in Fiji's northern province in 1945, after the island became uninhabitable following excessive phosphate mining during its colonial era. A V Kiribati heritage, the irony here, is that Barnabans are at a similar crossroads again, some 70 years later, this time due to climate change. Here in the Pacific, tradition, religion, language, the environment and culture are all intertwined. They are a way of life. For Pacific Islanders, the connection to the environment is closely linked with culture, hence the impacts of climate change go to the very heart of their way of life. Climate change efforts by Pacific Island leaders the European Union and other stakeholders have been encouraged by His Holiness Pope Francis' recently published encyclical on climate change, Laudato Si, which speaks of the protection of the planet and what the Pope calls our common home. It involves the uh, people and the interests of people and people's dignity livelihood, uh, life. Yeah, not only people, but our whole creation is at stake here. So that's why to arrive at something legally binding is, uh, it, 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 that is a very, very much needed uh, uh, point of arrival. In the Itoke context, we have the Vanua concept a, a Vanua framework of looking at the world, you know. The Vanua is an interconnection between the people, the land, and the world of the spirit, you know. You, you respect the, uh, you, you, uh, the, uh, the people and the land and the sea, and everything is connected, you know. He appeals to indigenous uh, peoples who have uh, um, uh, stories and myths and values that can contribute to this. Nature and God's creation was made in perfect balance. When God made this uh, universe and especially this planet, it was in perfect balance. And I think this came home to me too when I was in the uh, Antarctic, that he was this frozen continent. And here we are in our part of the world having to deal with the heat on a daily basis, and yet the other end of the, the, the globe is um, frozen most of the year. And uh, why didn't God ensure that there was, uh, that the temperatures were equal around? But he did it, he had a reason for doing these things. And so, I think the message that needs to be sent to everybody is that whatever we do, whatever profound uh, innovation man creates, has got to be at the cost somewhere else. It's never without a price. Because everything has been created in balance. And so if you dig a hole here, you've got to dump your, your, your digging somewhere else or you, you build higher ground somewhere else because that is the nature of, of nature as created by God. The Pacific Climate Change and Migration Project is funded by the European Union 
and implemented by the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, in partnership with the International Labour Organization and the United Nations Development Programme. The idea behind the project is the strengthening of Pacific Island countries' ability to address the impacts of climate change on migration and to strengthen national capacity to use labour migration as a way to adapt to the impacts of climate change. The link between migration and climate change is, is very important. Uh, I think we all know that many, from many Pacific countries there are migrants who, uh, who leave to, to seek employment opportunities, to seek uh, to uh, have a better income for them and, and their families. They're starting to leave not only for economic uh, reasons, they're starting to leave because their very futures are, are threatened by climate change, by, 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 by rising, uh, rising waters. So the phenomenon of, of migration is going to become, I think, more and more significant uh, in the Pacific. So the reason that we're supporting this program here is to help prepare our partner governments best for migration, to be able to manage migration in a way that really benefits those who are going to be leaving their countries, either temporarily or even on a permanent basis, but also to help the countries which are going to be receiving the migrants in order to maximize the opportunities that this uh, additional labor and this additional ex expertise and experience uh, can offer them. I think the work of PCCM is, is, is fundamental in helping governments to be able to plan better migration and to anticipate the effects of, of migration. I think without strong statistics, and I'm very proud of the, uh, the statistical work, the, uh, the surveys that the, uh, that the project has, has carried out in the three target countries. The project focuses on researching, investigating the attitudes, you know, the thinking, and the behaviors, why people behave in a certain way of the vulnerable, climate vulnerable communities. It's very important that we understand the cultural realities, and by culture I mean simply the way we think and the way we behave. A very simple definition of culture. It's very important that we, 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 we understand cultural realities on which we then formulate policies that are more relevant. That is the challenge for the project, uh, project such as, as this that aims, looks at uh, changing the way people behave and the way people relate to each other uh, in order for them to be able to cope with, the, uh, with climate change. For the information is what the very important for the, the planning or the process, and particularly what the preparing for the good for the development of the, the migration system itself. And for the policy co coherency is for the another word aspect that for the good for the policy is always based on the, the evidence and for the identifying to the, the needs of the people who are going to migrate. And for, for these for the reasons, uh, first of all, the research is for the very important. I think these projects on uh, migration is really uh, working uh, good on that eh, and helping us provide data, updated data and information uh, that is available, options that are available uh, are the, the extremely important for the human face of it. Uh, so to help the government of Tuvalu help it, uh, our people. And we are very grateful that the uh, ASCAP, the park office here uh, with the help of the European Union is helping in this way. Certainly I think it can also be, I don't know, it's not my project, but the way I see it, it could well be a very important link uh, to coordinate um, other projects uh, in response to climate change. The European Union's Climate Change Commissioner recently visited the Pacific to attend the Pacific Island Forum Leaders Meeting in Papua New Guinea. Commissioner Miguel Arias Cañete said that the European Union was confident that the world wouldn't ignore the plight of tiny Pacific Island countries at risk of disappearing under rising seas. Despite their size, he said, small island states were active, passionate negotiators with a solid case and a loud voice on the world stage. Climate change has increasingly become a national policy issue for many Pacific Island countries and continues to dominate the agenda at regional and intergovernmental levels such as at the last Pacific Islands Development Forum meeting held in Fiji and at the Pacific Islands Forum held in Papua New Guinea. 
I'm very much saying to the Pacific leaders that actually climate change, as they know, is an issue for heads of state and that they must come together with a very coherent sense of what the small island developing states here in the Pacific, but also the Caribbean, all of the SIDS need. And it includes a financial package, but it also includes uh, understanding of the very real stresses that they are under. And uh, they need to talk to other leaders who will be gathered in New York, who will then be in Lima, where the climate finance issue will be discussed, who will be at the Commonwealth, where a lot of leaders will be together, which are large and small, and that's an opportunity. All before Paris. Don't leave it to Paris. Work every step along the way to Paris. The European Union is a close partner, a close ally to the Pacific in really driving forward the climate change uh, agenda. I think there is more that can be done to make others around the world conscious of the fact that there are countries the very existence of which is threatened by, by climate change and that climate change is a challenge now. It's not a, a distant possibility. It is something that we really have to face up to now and we really have to, in Paris, work together, European Union, Pacific partners, to really get to the agreement that we need that is going to make a difference and is going to start to really turn the tide. We are in a position to be the first generation to be able to resolve the problems of poverty and inequality, but probably, probably the, the last generation to be able to do anything about climate change. What that means is that uh, time is running out. A legally binding agreement was long overdue. I think it's important for, for the rest of the global community. Um, we're on the front line. No matter whether a legally binding agreement is, is, comes into place, we as a country, on the basis of the science, we will be underwater by the, by, by the century. We are the example of why a legally binding agreement is so necessary. Uh, we are the canaries in the coal mine. For those at the front line, whose very lives depend on how the world deals with the issue of climate change, a lot is certainly at stake. Assimilation of culture, tradition, languages, a new home and a new way of life are just a few of the many challenges that emerge beyond the horizon. Everybody sees things from their own perspective through their own eyes, and for, from their own environment, from their own background. In Fiji, you've got mountains, you've got hills, so when you talk about sea level rise, it's only about those people on the coastline. But uh, we don't have a coastline because we're all coastline. We don't have any high uh, piece of land. So when you talk about threat to the communities on the coastline, that is us in totality. We don't have anything left. We will have nothing left if the coastline is eroded because that's our entire nation being eroded. There's a problem with us to Wallowies. We are so humiliated by our culture, our tradition, that we, we thought that staying back in Tuvalu is to maintain the culture. But we ask here that the white Tupans in Kiowa as Philly citizens, we are singing the chorus to tell them, relocate, accept the relocation, because life is more important. Culture, tradition, all this can be practiced in a foreign land like Fiji. We still maintain the culture of the Tuvaluans, but the future of generation of Tuvalu depends on our decisions now. We really beg the, you know, these political leaders, the, the big leaders of this world to, to make a change, to stop all this uh, carbon. Really, really a big problem to us here in Tuvalu, in the Pacific, especially Tuvalu. If they can all work together and see the small islands to do something about it. And as the world approaches the crucial COP21 climate conference in Paris this December, Pacific Island leaders are hopeful that a meaningful agreement will finally be adopted to lay the foundation for urgent and adequate global actions on climate change. The Paris conference may well decide the fate of Pacific Islanders and those at risk of possible extinction from climate change. We are dealing with human lives and uh, one human life affected and inflicted on with injuries is already too much. There is a, an element of urgency to help them to 
to find a way uh, locally, regionally, and particularly at a global level to help to save them. We must save these people from the impacts of these disasters, particularly climate change. Mm -hmm.